Hey, how are you folks? Jason Horowitz, glad to be with you on the big vent presented by Coors Light. Today and every Tuesday for the next five weeks, we'll be venting on the hottest topics happening in the world of sports with some of the best guests from around the nation. So be sure to tune in each and every week as we continue with this new show. I'm nice and comfy, ready to vent, and joining us, another man ready to vent, Clark Kellogg of his knowledge of college basketball and, of course, the NBA as well. Clark, let's focus on that a little bit more today because the NBA playoffs have a uh, just gotten underway. I want to start with this. Are they too long? Well, I think the whole NBA season is too long, Jason. And when you consider 82 games, eight regular, eight preseason games plus the playoffs, uh, I would love to see the league reduce the schedule of 15, 20 percent, shave a month off the regular season, and then actually not stretch out the playoffs as long as they're stretched out in the first round for the sake of television. You have some three, off, sometimes four day gaps between games in that first round of um, a seven-game series, and I would love to see all of that excess trimmed down a little bit to make the season tighter. I think it would make the playoffs better and the whole product uh, much better. But, yeah, the playoffs are too long. They're dragged out too long, as is the whole NBA season, in my opinion. With the playoffs specifically, Clark, is it as simple as going back to a best of five in the first round, or you like the best of seven, you just want it to be shorter between games? Well, I could actually have both. Um, if I had to pick one or the other, I would probably go to the Seth, stay with the seven-game series, but just reduce the time between the games so it's not dragged out so long. Um, right. Five games um, is probably a tad short. I think seven is a nice number. Um, just reduce the, the, the amount of days between games. Uh, let's focus a little bit past the playoffs when, uh, when the finals are all said and done and we're ready for the NBA draft. One of the hottest topics uh, concerning the NBA is off the court is the fact of the age limit with the NBA draft. It's set at 19. Uh, there's always been talk about moving it to 20. What would you like to see? I would love to see something similar to what baseball does in that kids can actually sign a professional contract upon leaving high school if they are so inclined and feel that's the best course of action for them individually. But if they do end up in college, they're required to be there for three years. I would love to see something like that in the NBA game, it would have to be collectively bargained between the league and the Players Association. I don't know if that will happen. Um, but that would be, I think, an ideal way to approach um, kids leaving school early to go to the NBA. Um, with that said, the 19-year-old age limit being one year out of high school and 19 is, um, a, is something that I think is better than what we had before. So uh, that's kind of how I view it. I would love to see um, the baseball model apply to the NBA. But with the baseball model in the NBA, Clark, I, I kind of have a little bit of problem with that in the way that the NBA drafts only two rounds. Baseball, you have 50 players that you're selecting over the course of an entire day. If you're taking your one pick on a high school player, he decides to go to college, all of a sudden you've got nothing left. How do you remedy that? Um, I'm not sure I exactly understand what you're saying, Jason. Re re rephrase that for me. In <laughs> other words, you've got you've got a one day in, the, you've in baseball. One... You've got 50 or so draft picks. So if one yeah, of your NBA, guys NBA, decides that he's going to go to college out of high school, uh, you've got 49 other guys to go with. In, in NBA, you've got two rounds. If you take one of your guys and he decides out of high school he's going back to college or he's going to go to college, uh, you're left with well, you, you lose your draft pick. That. I think you alleviate that by by stipulating when you have to determine. Whether you're going to be, if you just like before, when you determined that you were going out of high school to the NBA, you have to have a window there where you can't go back to either spot. And if not, then maybe if you do draft a kid who decides to go back to college, you retain that individual's rights for the time period that he's in college until it's time for him to leave. All right, let's talk about one of the franchises that's going to have a, a high draft pick, and that's the uh, New York Knicks. Clark, a lot this year throughout the season has been made of the fact that uh, in the last couple of seasons, New York has to be successful for the league to be as successful as possible. Do you buy into that? Well, I think there's some merit to that. I don't think that's the only way the league is successful. There are 30 teams in the league that make up the NBA. New York clearly is the media capital of the world in, in a lot of ways, and when that franchise is healthy, it has a trickle-down effect, no doubt. But I think a league is only as strong, not only as its biggest media markets, but also as the other media markets are, are well represented. So um, I'm not completely in agreement with that 100%. There is some truth to it, but 
Um, I think the league as a whole has to have success in other pockets to be successful as a league. In other words, if New York is just super successful and other pockets of the league are floundering, the league is still not fully healthy. I agree with you on that. You need the league to be strong as a whole. Clark, time for the end of this show. It's time for you to vent what's bothering you. Uh, have at it, sir. Well, if, uh, if there's one thing I would vent on right now, it's the um, silly political season that we're in as we try to determine who's going to be the Democratic nominee for the president. Um, the fact that every single little misstep in words or phrases or positions by either Hillary Clinton or Barack Obama is made into some kind of major deal when the issues that need to be talked about, the economy, jobs, education, the war, those things sometimes lose the importance that they deserve because of this silly season of trying to dig beneath the surface of somebody making a misstep with a comment that they make. So that's my vent. I wish folks would lock into what's important as we as a country try to determine who's going to be our Democratic nominee for um, the race for president in the fall. CBS Sports is Clark Kellogg turning into CBS News is Clark Kellogg. Thank you very much <laughs> sir, for venting with us. Appreciate it. <laughs> my pleasure, Jason. That's our show for today, folks. Now we want to hear what you have to say. Click or visit www.cbssports.com slash big event or big vent to uh, vent your thoughts with us. I'm Jason Horowitz. Take care, folks.